All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to do a little video talking about three high safety stuff. I've been talking about the last uh, three or four months, jumping on board with everybody else. Uh, I think it's something that fits our kids. I think it's something that we have the types of players uh, to play, so we are going to uh, definitely give it a shot. So we've been working on some things. So today I'm going to look at uh, the rotations involved in, in uh, blitzing whether you're using the middle safety or how you can use the middle safety to, to drop into different spots, add them in a the blitz, and do some different things. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, headwear company that we use uh, with PlayFest Football under school that I'm currently at, completely customizable. Baker Sporting Goods, company I use for coaching gear, shirts like this. Our player spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed by Baker Sporting Goods. If we do any online stores, we always use Baker, so check them out. Just Play Football, a more powerful presentation. Uh, the best play drawing tool on a market. It's what I use if I'm going to diagram plays, anything for a playbook or anything for a webinar or anything for uh, any coaching clinics I'm going to speak at. I always use Just Play, so check them out. Game Strat, sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check out Game Strat. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. It can go in your weight room on a rack or it can go outside on the field on you can put a 2x4 or something in the ground, you can hook it up however you want to do it. Get thousands of reps, you don't need a partner, elbows in, thumbs up, work on striking. High and tight, which is a ball security training aid. Uh, you have an auditory, instant auditory feedback, you're going to hear a beat. Ball has to be held in a proper position, wrist above elbow, the ball has to be held high. It's got to be secured with the proper points of pressure. If you don't have all those points of pressure in there, you are not going to hear the auditory beep. So the kids get immediate feedback, All right, which is something that I like from a training aid. The kids can use it by themselves. They get the feedback right away. Coach should only have to use a couple buzzwords, say a couple things. Obviously the ball is not high, it's not tight. Pressure's not right, you don't hear the beep. You're doing it wrong, so make sure you check out high and tight. And then Stand Perfect, which is a training aid we use to teach chances. I love it with offensive linemen, defensive linemen. I love it with receivers. When you have young kids, new kids, uh, incoming ninth graders, or if you're teaching or coaching at the Pop Warner level or the middle school level and you have to work on stances, you want something that you can get multiple reps in. You want something that can help you eliminate buzzwords, eliminate having to grab a foot and say, hey, move it three inches outside, heel toe, in step, all the buzzwords you used to use. Now put them on the ground wherever you want them. Get your linemen set, all right, left foot stagger. Get them set where you want them. Put your feet in the ground. Get your receivers set. Put them down. Get them ready to go. So now you're getting more reps and eliminating buzzwords. So make sure you check out Stand Perfect. So like I said, the three-high safety system is something that's been around uh, it's been around actually for a long time. Uh, people have been using different variations of it for a long time, but it started to take uh, a little bit more, or gain a little bit more uh, tread, so to speak, in the last couple of years when Iowa State was using it uh, in the Big 12. And it's something that we can play all of our base coverages from it. Um, it's all the same coverages we teach, so we don't have to teach anything new. Uh, and it lets us put another athlete on the field, a guy that's kind of a, a, a tweener between a safety and a linebacker, uh, it allows us to play him in areas where he can be effective. So he's usually some type of drop-down player. He's involved in some of our run fits. He's maybe covering a back vertical, all right, or depending on the type of kid it is, maybe a number three vertical and three by one. But uh, you can choose as a coach how you want to do it. But it gives you a, a good structure that kind of disguises some things. Obviously, eight back-end players gives you more speed on the field. Uh, five DBs gives you the ability to – uh, use multiple coverages. Uh, I think it gives you the ability to play a little bit more man in today's RPO world because you have five skills on the field. Obviously, if you're going to face 21, 22, 12, uh, you know, 32 personnel, if teams are going to start to get real heavy on it on you, then it may not be the greatest. You may need to get that guy out and substitute in some D linemen or some linebackers. But for everyday uh, base defense, it, it is kind of starting to hold its own as a really good theory usually paired with the tight front. You can do it a bunch of different ways, uh, but usually paired with the tight front to take away some inside gaps, push the ball wide. So the thing I like about it is, is again, we've played a 4 2 5 structure for a long time, so we've played five DBs for a long time. I love the blitz rotation. So for us, all right, if we want to send five and we want to send the mic and the nickel, let's say we can make it a field call however we want to do it. All right, if we want to send the mic and the nickel, and let's just say we go with America's path right now, and we send a Mike in a nickel, we can make it real easy to rotate towards the nickel if he's in the blitz. So if the nickel's in the blitz, we can just rotate the middle safety down to be the, the three-hook player. We can 
rotate the safety to the side of the nickel down to be the two seam player. The backside safety can rotate to the middle, and now you will. All right, you've got a two seam player here. All right, what you would call your middle hole player here, and then you've got your two seam player here. All right, uh, skiff player, seam curl, flat, whatever you want to call them. And then you're on the outside, you can press bail, you can play your thirds, however you want to play them. So you get yourself into a simple three under three deep, you're sending five, the rotation happens um, towards uh, the nickel because he's involved in the blitz. And it reminds me a lot of the old school Dick LeBeau fire zones with Troy Palomalu where based on the set and what they were trying to do, Palomalu could rotate inside, he could rotate outside. So there's a lot of good things that he can do from it and it becomes relatively simple to do within those rotations and it makes the blitz game all right from that same three high look from that same safety look you're getting you know your blitzes and your pressures that you want from that same structure and, and the big key that we're trying to teach our kids right now is hold that three high safety look as long as you can before any of your rotations because that is the key for where we are going to disrupt uh, the offense coordinator and the quarterback if we want to send the inside two guys all right however we want to do it if we want to send the inside two, if we want to send the Mike and the Will, now we can do the same thing. We can rotate the middle safety down. All right, the nickel is involved in the coverage now. He's too seen. So now we're going to rotate away from the nickel. All right, so now the safety away from the nickel is going to go down to be too seen. Uh, the uh, middle safety gets the middle hole again, so that's simple for him. The nickel gets two seam on his side, and now the safety to the side of the nickel because the nickel is not blitzing we are going to rotate the other way, so now the safety to the side of the nickel is going to spin back and play the middle. You're still playing your outside third techniques uh, with your corners. Now, the good thing about these blitzes is you can also, at any time, they can become man-free blitzes because you are now in a situation where you could play a number one with a corner, right? You could play uh, a number two with a safety, you could play number one with a corner and number two with the safety. You could play the nickel possibly on three if you wanted to. Middle safety can play the free spot. All right, so if you wanted to get into man free, you could do it at any time. All right, you could play, um, you know, you could play the nickel on two, the middle safety. So you could also play very simply the nickel on number two. You could play the middle safety on the back or number three, and then you could play your other safety to the side of the nickel, he can become the free player. So you can get to man free very easily also in any of these five man pressures. So it makes it easy to do, it makes it easy on the rotations, um, and it makes it very simple for your kids. And then it may, you know, the idea is to keep things simple for the kids, but also to make the offense, and especially nowadays with, 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 uh, you know, with tempo teams and everything else that's going on, I think you have to make the offensive coordinator guess as much as you have to make the quarterback guess. Because in today's world, I think the offensive coordinator has a little bit more control over the game in the tempo world than the quarterback does. Even though in the multiple RPOs and access throws and gifts and things, quarterback has a lot of things that he can do with the football. But I still think it's the offensive coordinator, um, that guy on the sideline. You want to confuse him with your looks as much as you can. You can, you can involve the middle safety in the blitzes. All right, so if you wanted to bring the middle safety in the blitzes, you could bring the middle safety front side A gap. All right, now bring five. When we do this, all right, we like to play it more as a trap cover two deal, so a four under two deep deal. So now we get all right that hook seam guy there, that hook seam player. All right, so kind of that hook wall seam player inside corners trap flat safety side. Now we can still show the same three high safety look bring the middle safety with the pressure, and now we can trap the corners to where if you think you're getting certain, certain throws in the flats or because we've been three under three deep, now all of a sudden you get into a look that is four under, all right, two deep. So now you're building in multiplicity. It's very simple to do. You've already got the will and, and the, the, uh, the nickel away from each other, so they can be two hook players, all right, or hook scene players, however you want to look at it or however you want to call that player. Okay, very good versus two by two, sometimes three by one, you probably want to get into uh, more of a three under three deep look, but two by two or balance sets or two by one sets, anything where you can get a guy to play, all right, that inside seam of number two. For us, a lot of times we would like to bring this from the field so that the two seam or the hook seam player into the boundary, if he's got an open B gap, it's less room to travel. I don't want this guy worried about getting 
underneath seams or walling a number two vertical while also having a gap. So he's got no gap to play, so he can play a little bit wider. So sometimes we'll bring this from the field. Now you got a safety blitzing from depth coming from seven or eight yards. Uh, it makes it real tough um, on the offense. You could also get it to where you kind of mug it up and bring almost three in the A-gap. So that look where you see maybe the mic mugged up there, you start to creep this safety down. All right, and now you're getting to where you're getting a situation where you might go straight through the center, double A gap here. All right, see if you can get the guards possibly to have to fan out or do something else. So there's a lot of different looks you could show. All right, if you really wanted to get exotic with it, you could show the, the, the will and the nickel up. All right, everything mugged. You can bring the, mics, the middle safety down, get that kind of triple A gap pressure, and now you're coming out with the will, you're coming out with the nickel, you're only sending five. But you're trying to get them to fan or turn out the people so that you can get that triple A gap pressure there. Okay, so very easy to do involving the middle safety. I like to involve the middle safety when you bring them from back here. Just work them with the mic however you want to do it. So if you're working the nose away and you're working the mic front side, you work the middle safety in the B gap. If you're working the mic in the B gap, you're working the middle safety back under there. So that guy blitzing from depth is tough to account for. All right, it's a guy that, that you know, Obviously, the more you play, you get filmed. They may have to start working on stuff like that. But originally, a lot of times in, in the in the offensive line or the running back or the quarterback's ID, where they're going to sit, who's the mic, where they're going to turn their protection to, what they're going to do, they don't always equate for that third high free safety. So when you're bringing him, I think that makes it a really good deal. So you add him to the blitz and make it real simple. Okay, and then obviously it's real easy to send six. You've got five cover players. For us, we always build it in kind of the same way, or at least we try to, depending on uh, our players, how advanced they are, how much they know about our defense. So you've got the five back end players, which makes it real easy. Now when you're trying to bring six, okay, now you can make it real easy to where you can keep the nickel off the edge and the will off the edge. And now right away you build yourself into playing that as a hot coverage. You can play that as a straight zero coverage. All right. Obviously, if you play it as hot, this is going to be your hot player vision and break. This is going to be your hot player vision and break. And then you get that spin. So now the middle safety becomes a guy that is dropping down to play the middle hole in three under three deep. He's a guy that's involved in the blitz. He's a guy that is dropping deep middle. So your middle safety is doing a bunch of different things, which make it nice All right, on the defense and makes it nice and flexible. If you were to go and play it as a zero concept, obviously, all right, corners have one, he's got two, he's got two, he's got one, he's got three. Make it real easy. If it's three by one, put the middle safety over there, backside safety, go play it back. If it's two back, middle safety and one of the backside safeties can now green dog the two backs, bracket, however you want to do, add on versus blitzes, hug up the blitz, however you talk to your kids about it. If, if you're playing man and your guy blocks, you go hug him up. If he still blocks, you keep going. If he peels for screens or routes, you have to then, out of your blitz, blitz the back type stuff is what we're talking about. So you've got five skill players to play man on, five skill players, so it makes six-man pressures a little bit easier. We can peel this pressure at any time and add a post player. So what we can do is we can take the middle safety off of three, put the middle safety in the middle of the field as a post player, and now we can peel that blitz with the outside guy, so now we're getting a six-man pressure. If the back release is wide and versus one back, all right, if the back release is wide, you're going to have to peel off of that back, so it goes from six to five. But if they're a team that's trying to get the back out or trying to throw the ball hot, it makes the quarterback think a little bit. All right, so now you would peel if the back were to release wide. If the back release is inside, now you have to have your interior players understand. All right, six on six, six are coming. If the back goes inside, he's got to block somebody. All right, so whoever the back blocks is now going to have to eat that back man-to-man -man because you're playing it as a peel deal. Or you could take the middle safety and say, look, if the back release is wide, you play the post. If the back release is tight, you buckle down and hug up and get ready to play the back. You could do it that way as well. I think you could also, versus athletic quarterbacks and good quarterbacks, I think you could peel and play this guy as a spy player. All right, and use that extra athlete that's on the field however you want to use them. If they're a big quarterback run team and you go zero and you're afraid of quarterback runs, you might be able to go zero peel, put him as a spire on the quarterback, and now get a seventh guy down there ready to help play those jet power reads or things like that that you might be getting quarterback runs. 
okay? And then the other thing we like doing sometimes is if we are really struggling, we make it a chaos theory where now it's a peel deal and the middle safety adds himself, all right, opposite of where the center turns or wherever they pick up. If you're bringing six and the back stays in protection, all right, so if they fanned it out this way for argument's sake, and the center went this way, the back's probably going to have to step up and either play the A-gap player or they're going to turn the whole thing down and put the back on the guy on the edge. So now when you make it a chaos theory, you bring him from depth and you tell him to find the first open window. It's still a peel deal. So any back that goes wide, he's got to, they have to peel. All right, but now what you do is you add the middle safety to the blitz, and now the first lane that he finds, that middle safety can go through the first open lane that he finds and add himself onto the blitz and now you're making this becomes kind of a seven man deal so that's not uh, you know that's not everyday game plan that's not standard that's something you do if the other team doesn't get the back out if the other team is not a big screen team um, obviously you always have to prepare your pressures based on what the other team does if you're just struggling to get home if you need to heat up that quarterback if you're backs against the wall and you feel like you need to get there and get the ball out of his hand quick whatever the scenario may be there's always a time and place for an added on seven man pressure if they have six guys to block. Uh, if they were two back, it may become an eight man pressure uh, where you hug up some people. Uh, so always trying to get that added guy because now you feel like you're going to get a free runner. Now, if they're a heavy screen team or, or a quick game team, probably not the greatest theory in the world because by the time you add that middle safety on, the ball is going to get out of their hand. But if you get them in down in distances where you feel like the quarterback's got to hold on to the ball and you want to heat them up, all right, if you, like I said, if they were a bigger screen team, I would probably go with the peel theory and hug the middle safety up. If the back releases inside and we can't peel them, I would put the middle safety up getting ready to play that back. Uh, quarterback runs, I would play the peel theory. But if you feel like uh, versus the game plan that you're seeing, you really want to heat somebody up and get there, you can add it as a chaos theory. And it all comes off the same six-man pressure. You just change it from a hot theory to a zero theory to a peel theory and then to the chaos theory. It's really not that difficult to teach. Um, it's not hot. We've, from the 4 2 five, we, we would send the mic in the will and we would play hot or zero or peel uh, a bunch of different times and, and, and very easy for us to teach to the safeties and the corners. Um, it's an easy deal. Just getting them to understand how to play hot is probably the toughest deal. Man is what it is. It's easier to teach, harder to play sometimes. Obviously, in the run game, it's not as great as uh, zone pressure stuff can be, all right, so man is always going to be an easier scenario. So we feel like we go from hot to zero. Uh, the thing I really like about the tight stuff and uh, the 3-3 three, three personnel theory is now you're adding three backers, so when you go to peel, I like to keep the backers as peel players. I don't always want to peel the ends in high school. I don't think we have enough time to work through the reps involved. Um, our ends could probably do it in decent fashion because our ends are not your typical 260, 70, 80 pound defensive ends like you see in college. So our ends are usually lighter guys that are speed players anyway. So um, the matchup wouldn't be the end of the world. We Obviously if it's a peel or a flare, we feel like we'd be okay. But I feel much better in appeal theory when I'm teaching it to linebackers or safeties. So now when you go with the 3-3 three, three personnel from the tight front, you bring the will and the nickel off the edge, they're the peel players. So hopefully this helps you with some free high safety blitz rotations. Obviously not the only way uh, that you can do it. There's obviously a bunch of teams out there that have been playing three high stuff that, that do a lot of really good things. Your blitzes are what you want them to be. They can be as exotic as you want, as simple as you want. I think they need to be effective and I think your kids need to know how to play them. Uh, when you get into the 3-3 three, three personnel world and the tight world and the three high safety world, I think you can sit down with paper and pencil and draw up eight million blitzes. To me, your kids have to be able to play them. They have to be sound. So. Uh, we try to keep it to where there's enough on the back end to protect us, so we try to have at least something that's three under three deep. We try to have something that's four under two deep. We try to have something that's man free, and then we try to have something that's either uh, two under three deep hot or a zero theory. And then depending on, on how much we can do from, from there, um, then we build on. Because blitzes are only as good as the execution. They're only as good as the players doing them. So, Multiple blitzes that go on the wrong track don't do you any good. Multiple blitzes that rotate wrong don't do you any good. They look great on paper. They look great on the whiteboard. But at the end of the day, what we usually do is we simplify those theories. So we'll bring the mic and the nickel, like I said, and we'll play one rotation behind it. We'll bring the mic and the will, and we'll play one rotation behind it. 
We'll bring the mic in the middle safety and play one rotation behind it. So now that the offense is actually seeing multiple rotations, and they don't know, they can figure out that every time you bring the mic in the nickel, it's going to be three under three deep. Or every time you bring the mic in the middle safety, it's going to be four under two deep. Good coaches will see that on film. They'll figure that out. But the quarterback has to see that happening live. And if your rotations are good and your blitzes occur later, then it's not something that they can necessarily diagram plays for and say, hey, look, I think we're getting Mike Nickel. Uh, they're going to be three under three deep. Now we're going to call this play. If they're a check with me team and you're getting ready to bring the Mike in the nickel and they all of a sudden scan, check, freeze, you may want to get out of that blitz because now they may know that if the Mike and the nickel come, we like to play three under three deep. So I think you have enough answers there. I think there's enough multiplicity. Uh, it's up to you as a coach with what you want to do. Um, at the end of the day, we throw a lot of things on paper on the board, and then when game time comes, we usually get real simplistic uh, with our blitz paths and which are, with our coverages behind it. And like I said, the Mike and the nickel come, we're playing three under three deep. The Mike and the will come we're playing three under three deep. The mic and the middle safety come, we're playing four under. We send six, we're playing hot or zero most of the time, add the peel of the chaos theory. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Hopefully you're having a great summer. Uh, hopefully your workouts are going good or your vacation's going good. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a new video or I go and do YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like this or don't like it, you don't like the content the way I deliver the content. Uh, some of my speech idiosyncrasies, okay, all right. I know I say those a lot of times in videos. If that bothers you, give it a thumbs down. If you don't like the fact that I have seven partners, give it a thumbs down. Let's me know the things that are good, the things that are bad. Negative uh, feedback is not a bad thing in, in the social media world. You know, again, I saw a great thing online today. If you're afraid to be critiqued, then go ahead and be nothing and do nothing with your life. A um, friend of mine posted that on, on social media today. So. I'm not afraid of, uh, of being critiqued in front of the camera. I'm not afraid of being critiqued for what I believe in and what we do. So go ahead, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a message. Any message you leave, I will always try and get back to you if it's about football. I appreciate everything you guys do and everything you do for Play Fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.